Well, this is a great book. It's a New York Times bestseller, but the story's not over. The book is The Quants, How a New Breed of Math Whizzes Conquered Wall Street and Nearly Destroyed It by Wall Street uh, Journal reporter Scott Patterson, and he's with us tonight right here on Public Exposure. I'm Stan Emmert. Scott, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Stan. Uh, and thank you very much for joining us uh, from New York. We know it's late for you, but uh, we've got a thousand questions and we've only got time for about 20. So <laughs> let's see what we can get right, done. We'll shoot away. Uh, first, I want to let our audience know that if you have any, any questions, if you want to know how to get the book, go to scottpattersonreports.com and you're going to learn an awful lot and you're going to find out more about the book and you're going to want to learn as much as you possibly can. Um, Scott, before we get into a, a, a whole lot, what is a quant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, Quant, uh, first of all, it's short for quantitative. So these are uh, basically people who, who use mathematics and computers to uh, either predict what's going to happen in the market using historical data or uh, dev uh, devise complex securities like the uh, credit default swap derivatives that a lot of people have heard about recently in the, in the past few years. Um, they, uh, they're, they're very smart. They came on the scene about 20, 30 years ago, and it's, it's my belief after really digging into what's going on in Wall Street now that these guys have uh, essentially taken over and are running the show. Now, you said they're very smart. What are they smart at? Are they smart at math? Are they smart at business? Are they smart at chemistry? What are they smart at? <laughs> they, you will find quantum physicists. Uh, on Wall Street these days. You, you'll, you'll find people who are experts in string theory, uh, electrical engineering, chemistry. These are PhDs, uh, extremely uh, highly educated people who, for whatever reason, decided the cho chosen field that they'd studied either wasn't fulfilling enough, wasn't making them enough money, and uh, a lot of them discovered that things that were going on Wall Street were... Uh, that they could apply their skills. And, you know, there, there's a hedge fund called Renaissance Technologies. It's one of the most uh, successful investing operations ever. And uh, it's based on Long Island. It has about 90 PhDs working for it. The guy who founded it, Jim Simons, uh, is an award winning mathematician who actually came up with some things that are crucial components of string theory. Well, so let's, that's the kind of people we're talking about. Well, let's say you, you said uh, an unusual word there, or two words, hedge fund. You know, uh -huh. we're out here in Seattle. We know salmon. What's a, what's a hedge fund? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, he hedge funds are uh, these private partnerships for generally for the wealthy or institutions like pension funds invest in hedge funds. These are private uh, these, funds? These things became popular about 20 years ago, and became extremely popular in the past decade, and I, I think it was a hedge bubble, hedge fund mm -hmm. bubble. Um, there's, these guys are supposed to hedge out risk. They're a fund of money. They're supposed to hedge. Uh, I think what a lot of people found is that they were making a lot of big bets one way, and, and they weren't really hedging a lot. Hey, where can I get one? I've got 20 extra dollars this week. <laughs> Uh, it, it's only for the wealthy, Stan. Oh, so, oh okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much money you have, but I'm a reporter. <laughs> I know how much I make, and I can't get into these things. Well, um, all right, let's, let's get as to who the quants are, and I think the best introduction is a pic picture of a poker game from probably the 1870s or 1880s. So just who mm -hmm. are these quants? Mm -hmm. uh, we well, got I, you know, I, I, the, the poker game picture is great because I found out a after getting to know a lot of these guys, that they, they love poker. My book actually opens up with a poker scene in midtown Manhattan at the St. Regis Hotel where these guys gather together every year for this, uh, this poker charity event. And poker charity, the, poker charity with top, quantum physicists? The quant, quantum physicists, <laughs> the, the computer stock jockeys, the PhDs in economics. Um, and they get together and they play poker, and they, they think it hones their skills as traders, or I don't know, maybe they feel like they don't have, you know, they got to get a little of that trader out of them on the poker table. Oh. Because when they're, you know, tr their trading style is computer driven and it's not really as, that exciting. Well, let's introduce the players here. The, the first one we saw up on the screen just a moment ago was Peter, is it Muller or Mueller? Muller. From right. Morgan Stanley, PDT. What's PDT? PDT yeah. Uh, Peter Muller is a very interesting guy. He's one of the first uh, real quants that I, I learned about. 
He runs this uh, secretive quant uh, proprietary trading desk at Morgan Stanley, that giant mm -hmm. New York bank. And uh, these guys are so secretive, I found that at the uh, – I, I called a few people who I knew at Morgan Stanley, some fairly senior people, when I first learned about Mueller and PDT and asked them if they'd ever heard of these guys. And they said, no, who, you know, who's that? They didn't, they didn't even know who, at their own company, huh? They'd never heard of him and when, in fact, PDT was the largest uh, prop trading desk at the bank and had generated about $6 billion in earnings for the bank over the course wow. of about 15 years. Uh, Ken so they're Griffin very secretive, and that's one thing that these, these guys are all like that. They're all very, very secretive. Ken Griffin is another one from Citadel. Mm -hmm. Right. Ken Griffin, uh, he runs the, the uh, Citadel. Uh, it's a giant hedge fund based in Chicago. Uh, Ken Griffin is also pretty interesting. He, uh, he he was really into investing as a as a teenager, and he went to Harvard, and he he actually put a satellite on the top of his dorm in order to download stock data. And this is in the 80s, so uh, this is before the day trading days, and. He was extremely successful, uh, ended up running one of the biggest hedge funds in the world. Let's go over some of the, the rest of them. Yeah, we're going to go over some of the rest of them, too. There, now We've got Cliff uh, Asnes. We've got him on there twice. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, Cliff, uh, he, he's also interesting. He's, he and Peter Muller are, are good friends. I, that's one thing I learned about a lot of these guys is they're all, they all know each other, the, the top quants. <laughs> and uh, Cliff runs a quant hedge fund based in Greenwich, Connecticut. He's a, uh, he went to the University of Chicago and learned some interesting theories there and went from there to Goldman Sachs and then started up uh, his hedge fund called AQR Capital Management. Now, I've noticed that you're, say, you're calling these in the present tense. Peter Muller runs. Ken Griffin runs. Right. They're still running these things. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, they're, they're, these, are, these guys are alive and kicking. And still running billion-dollar hedge funds. Well, now the the uh, the subtitle to your book is how a new breed of math whizzes conquered Wall Street and nearly destroyed it. Now I thought we had congressional hearings about all this stuff, and so they nearly destroyed it, but they're still out there. <laughs> oh yes, uh, y you know they they managed to survive. I think it's one thing you can tip your hat to that some of them is they uh, they melted down, but but didn't completely blow up. So they. They, they managed to keep some money and, and come back. Um, well, some, some people say that, that cockroaches are the, uh, the animals that survived the most. Uh, right. but, but we won't do that comparison. Another, uh, <laughs> another quant is Boaz Weinstein. Is that right? Yeah, right. Boaz, uh, he, he did blow up. Uh, he, he's a guy who uh, I thought is very interesting. He also played poker with Cliff and Pete and, and others in this private poker game. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this poker game... Uh, Sometimes you need, you needed fifty thousand dollars to sit down at the table uh, oh. to play this game with these guys. Yeah, we got a guy um, in the booth that does that all the time, right, Harry? Yeah, <laughs> it's a um, different world. It's, it's complete. The money is is no object to them. The uh, the next one I think was uh, oh Jim Simons from Renaissance, who you've already mentioned, and then we we right. got one more on the list. Our uh, Seattle's own Aaron Brown, Liars Poker. How, why is he on that list? Yeah, Aaron Brown. Uh, I, I, he's a he's a very interesting guy. He actually lives right down the street from me. He's uh, he, he bounced around a lot in Wall Street. He did come from Seattle, uh, where he learned to play poker in these uh, backroom poker games that uh, were pro proliferated in Seattle. I guess back in the the 60s. Uh, I don't know if they're still there, but he became a very good poker player and uh, ended up going to. University of Chicago. He went to Harvard for a while. I think he played played with Bill Gates uh, a couple times. Thought these guys were a bunch of nerds. Um, yeah, but they, he, they he ended are. up going to Wall Street and being being very successful, and ended up working at AQR with Cliff Asnes. Mm. 